Looking at the video game sales charts, it's it really doesn't paint a rosy picture for the rest of 2024. Most of the big successes, hell, all of the biggest successes have come from the double A and independent space. Like Pal World right at the beginning of the year and then the continued outrageous success of Helldivers 2 has really bolstered an industry and highlighted a problem that the triple A space is kind of dying. And my favorite game that I have played and... I, I don't even know how long, still haven't got there, at least at the time of recording, still haven't got through the conclusion, which is very highly controversial, but I heard that about the remake as well, and it's like, okay, cool, I understand that they're telling a different story. I'm not going to be one of these old heads where it's like, I just wanted to play the old game, and it's like, well, this isn't the old game. Just sit back in your wheelchair and allow me to roll you off of a cliff. When it comes to sales and the amount of damage that has been done to the AAA space, and then also kind of the collapse of the co or the console market itself, mostly precipitated off of the backs of the dwindling AAA space, best AAA game that's coming out this year, I think, at least from my perspective, and it's probably going to be the only one that I play, but I can say that for myself and for other people that have played the game and have gotten a lot of entertainment out of it, it's going to be the last one that's out there. Okay, and there's so much stuff to praise uh, on the gameplay side, the storytelling side, the character side, the value side of it. And to compare and contrast that with another major release that came out within the same month as Rebirth, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, it doesn't have any additional microtransaction crap outside of the different versions that you can buy. You had the standard, you had the deluxe, uh, the yeah, the deluxe edition, and then there was a super special edition, which I'm going to get my hands on, which kind of sucks, but I got the I got the digital deluxe version. I got the deluxe version. My, my copy's sealed, and it's going to be just sitting over there because I want to get all three parts, the digital version, or I'm sorry, the deluxe versions of all of them and keep them for posterity's sake because they're great. They're really great. But I also let loose the whole idea that I'm probably not going to be buying too many other AAA games that are coming out, and especially, you know, when there are uh, the other games that are coming out, like Dragon's Dogma 2, the one that also was very highly anticipated, a sequel to a game 16 years in the making, was immediately undercut by shady business practices from the industry. Listen, if it's not being polluted by ideological subversionists, it is being killed by business practices. When I was at the peak of my video game collecting, okay, the PS three xbox 360 era One of the biggest problems with buying anything you know second hand or something like that was the stupid online passes if you remember that era you realize how insufferable and how long suffering gamers in general have been due to poor business decisions by executives that don't care about the overall health of the industry they just care about their bottom line now they're reaping the effects of this pollution that has been going on for so long because there is no reason and i understand these are japanese sales charts and the playstation isn't quite the juggernaut that it once was and that's mostly due to their own terrible decision making but final fantasy 7 rebirth ps5 sales slipped 91 percent at retail there's probably a good reason why we're going to be getting a pc port by the end end of the year because this was not an inexpensive game i don't know the budget for it but know that every dollar that they put into it was put into that game there was no shady marvel like why did why did captain marvel cost 300 million dollars though like that makes no sense at all whatsoever like if this game like if it came out that this game cost 150 200 million dollars i don't think i would be that surprised then you know decisions like that budgets like that would lead me to believe there's a good reason for the three month exclusivity window that this needs to get put out onto the pc which is far bigger in japan in southeast asia around the world at this point in time where that game is going to be getting its just praise but unfortunately it's also likely to be you know an epic games ex or an epic game store exclusive which i'm not terribly pressed about Oh, but it's a Chinese spyware. It's like China owns the internet. Like, I don't know if they want your information, they're going to get it. But I digress. Well, games like Rebirth, for their business practices, for giving you a hundred and... By the time that I finish, you know, a hard mode run through, a hundred and... 50 200 hours of content business practices like that should be applauded for as high quality as it is dragon's dogma the reason that it's falling by the wayside is because they're micro trans er, micro transactioning and nickel and diming you to death and that's why that game at least from what i can see from the conversations that are out there don't nearly have the same legs as rebirth
even though yeah it was, it was 70 hours i think i think i seen somebody's review and it's like i got 74 75 hours of gameplay and then i finally rolled credits like damn man you enjoyed the entire project but and then you know just laid out the litany of problems that it's there and it's like oh man that's really gonna end up hurting replayability that's really gonna end up creating this artificial area of i'm sorry barrier of entry for people that have already been burnt by the industry with those shady practices which is you know a big reason why another one of the big releases one of the hyped releases that's out there is getting out ahead of this by saying that yeah stellar blade is not going to have microtransactions not going to have hidden fees it's a game you buy the game you get to play the game simple as right enjoy it as we made it we're not here to just pillage your pockets if we want to make a pirate game we'll make a pirate game but we're focusing on a different type of booty this time around but as it sits like the gaming industry, oh lord, it's uh, few and far between coming out through the rest of the year. We've talked about it before, given the fact that Xbox is basically irrelevant at this point in time and they're just farming out their IPs and just leveraging everything behind Game Pass and that model. Smaller PS5 exclusives still reportedly coming out this year because, yeah, they have nothing from any of their first party studios coming out through the end of financial year 2024, meaning that nothing until May may of next year of may of 2025 isn't coming out first party from sony not a lot of AAA games coming out it just isn't so it's going to be left up to the indie market which is doing incredibly good in or in order to try to usher us to the next big release that's out there now me personally i kind of hope that part three of the final fantasy trilogy gets released in the next couple of years even though they might start getting nostalgic for the 30th anniversary which is 2027 and if that comes out then i don't even know what to do with myself that would be four years i don't even want to think i'd be 37 playing that game i don't want that to be the case i really want to be 20 uh, i barely want to be 35 36 playing the conclusion of that trilogy but when it comes to big tentpole games that people are looking forward to like there was a lot of hype behind dragon age 4 but then everybody realized all oh, right that's modern bioware that's working on that fantastic there's rumors of what the last of us part three who cares when was the last time you heard anything about a fifth uncharted but the next big game on the schedule Grand Theft Auto 6 and we've seen the trailer it came out at the end of last year and yeah big flashy trailer and hell it probably should be given the fact that it's been 12 plus years two console cycles without a Grand Theft Auto game okay so people are looking forward to that knowing that it's going to be it's going to be a banger it's got to be a banger because why would Rockstar release another game when Grand Theft Auto 5 is still the billion dollar workhorse okay it's making them hand over fist hell it's the reason why they ended up killing red dead redemption 2 in the crib because their online wasn't nearly as successful as grand theft auto 5's not that it wasn't any good you hear a lot of good things about red dead online it's just it didn't move as many shark cards or the equivalent over there as you know the pioneer so yeah they know that they have to knock it out of the park and just recently i think it was over the past weekend we discussed how the people working at rockstar are kind of hindering the development of gta 6 and well we kind of have confirmation of that and wow kotaku actually do, doing games journalism what is this gta 6 production reportedly falling behind rockstar urges staff to return to the office to avoid a delay Ooh, that's not good so they're still fighting with their staff to get back to the offices and um it could get delayed until 2026 yeah i mentioned that there's a high likelihood that gets pushed to 2026 because they know they have to get it right and then that'll make what a full 13 14 years between releases it's another problem right because when it comes to final fantasy 7 rebirth coverage i've been watching and trying to get i want to get my references right for when i finally do a big review of that maybe in multiple parts not entirely sure even how to tackle this i need to get my references right so i'll have to play through the original probably have to play through and that's mostly what the hard mode is going to end up doing i need to cross my t's and dot my i's if i'm going to knock this out of the park and give that game justice i've been watching along with another playthrough maximilian dude shout out to him does great gameplay stuff incredibly entertaining guy highly recommend his content 
does a lot of fighting game stuff, and it's another genre that I'm partial to. Not terribly good at it, but it, I like the flashy people and the throws and the kicks and the fireballs. It's a lot of fun, okay? But he's an incredibly passionate Final Fantasy VII guy, and, well, has a lot of good theory crafting and analyzes that story excellently. And one of the problems, uh, I'm sorry, one of the things that he was talking about was well, in regards to part three, which he's not going to be talking about, or at least hasn't really, during his playthroughs, is, do you think in the development of part three, one of his chat members would ask him, do you think that they'd move over to a new engine? Remake and Rebirth were created on UE4, Unreal Engine 4, and while well, uh, Unreal Engine 5 is out there and they're doing some tremendous stuff with this, but Max replies, it's like, I, I can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's p part four. Three, whatever it's going to be called, it's n it's going to be on Unreal Engine 4 because it would take far too long to move it over to a new engine and you look and you see what they're doing right now with, you know, UE4 and it's tremendous. That notwithstanding, he went on to make mention of another aspect. It's that the AAA space, oh man, they're kind of running into a problem because of the belabored production costs and processes behind these gigantic games as making the releases fewer and farther in between and it's not really manifesting in overall quality and i concur with that assessment it's a big reason why i fell off for, of gaming for so long and only come back for very specific reasons because the stuff that you want to play they announce it and then the game doesn't come out for three four five years there's production problems there's developers like the ones over at rockstar that just want to have cushy positions they don't want to actually work they want to go ahead and throw out nebulous we don't want to have to go through a bad crunch well if you were doing the work that you were supposed to be assigned over the past decade plus there wouldn't be this terrible crunch that goes on right now and yeah these games would actually come out in a reasonable period of time i'm not saying rush anything out the door all i'm saying is plan have a game plan going into making your games let's read a little bit of this it is kotaku after all so there's only so much chemotherapy i can take grand theft auto 6 is likely one of the most anticipated games in history i would say you could go ahead and drop the likely part even though i'm not looking forward to it i probably won't be pre-ordering it i'll probably wait for a pc port plus i hear tremendous things like this thing will just go ahead and add another digit to your bank account and another five inches to your dick it's like yeah, I, i'm probably gonna wait on this one uh with millions of players around the world waiting for any scrap of info or screenshot to the upcoming open world crime simulator however as remote workers struggle with an unwanted return to office mandate imagine that people are still working from home in 2024 crazy uh from rockstar games kotaku has learned from sources with knowledge of the game's development process that gta 6 could miss its 2025 release window which was the only thing that was alluded to in that initial announcement trailer 2025 it's coming out. We all kind of thought, yeah, it's going to be the holiday game of 2025. The only other people that would come out during that time is Call of Duty. That'd be about it. And it's like, it's just going to have a wide open lane because nobody's going to want to compete with this juggernaut and slip into 2026. That's crazy. According to an update, Kotaku has now heard from more sources that while early 2025 was at one point possible, it's no longer the target for Grand Theft Auto 6's launch. That's kind of crazy. So the spring, the other big release window, is now basically off the table, and now they're looking for holiday, which probably we'll be hearing sometime soon is just it's a pipe dream it could still happen but yeah. as for why some believe this is the case it seems the information was out of date and a symptom of rockstar games tightening security and communication within the company yeah big reason why they want everybody to come back to work hey there's too many releases leaks uh coming out through unsecured networks so if we could just go ahead and bring everybody back to the office that'd be great you know where you were hired to work out of that'd be fantastic i don't want to it's like oh there's too many babies that work here fantastic i'm told not everybody is always on the same page or kept up to date across the various de departments and teams that's another bad thing to hear because that was the same problem that happened with cyberpunk 2077 and then also starfield and those highly anticipated games well you know how they released personally i can confirm it's become harder to nail down details since the leaks however a majority of sources were certain that early 2025 was no longer possible and said the target is firmly fall of 2025 and while most seem confident of hitting that date i'm still told there's a possibility of a delay as previously reported yeah so well i know me personally it doesn't affect me but this speaks to so many other 
larger problems with the gaming industry at the AAA level. At the indie level, people have a lot more leeway, mostly because you have a closer communication with the companies working on this project. Okay, they aren't promising the world and delivering a neighborhood in Detroit. There's reasonable expectations for a reasonable product in return. But the more and more you see things like this happen, and heaven forbid GTA 6 doesn't live up to people's expectations or it's just an outright turd, that right there could spell the end of the modern gaming AAA industry. The indies, thank God gaming is so decentralized where you can have hits from just about any corner of the world. But I think a lot, I think a lot of people in the industry also know that a lot is riding on GTA 6. And if it's not a banger, it's going to be a bust and a bust that's going to ripple throughout just some of the industry, but all of the industry. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.